Welcome back to my session. In the previous lecture, we discussed uh, miscellaneous methods of uh, component separation. And uh, that completes the physical processing of the municipal solid waste. And I also had given you few of the videos. One related to trommel, other one is uh, optical sorting. And also, next one was related the plastic waste menace. And after that, we started uh, the other processing technique, that is chemical transformation or chemical processes. However, it is in the syllabus, it is shown as a volume reduction by incineration process. And then we discuss what is incineration. And many times there is confusion regarding the understanding of the incineration and combustion. As I told interestingly in the book by George Shabanaglos, he has not used the word combustion. Uh, he has not used the word incineration, instead has the user more advanced word like a combustion. And then we were just discussing uh, the various advantages of the incineration process. The major advantage being volume reduction, significant reduction in the volume up to 90% of the solid waste can be converted, hardly 10% remains as ash. And also waste stabilization also we discussed. Another advantage is that of recovery of the energy, which is very, very necessary, the steam, then boiler, and finally it is converted into electricity which can be converted to the local factors. And after that, another advantage of the incineration process is the, the sterilization. So I hope you know what you mean by sterilization. Don't get confused with the stabilization and sterilization. Stabilization is more or less, uh, you know, stabilizing the waste, whereas the sterilization is related to the pathogens, microorganisms which are harmful for the human beings. It's quite possible because we are handling the municipal solid waste. There is a likely chance of presence of these pathogens. So because of the very high temperature, you know, all these uh, microorganisms or rather pathogens get killed. So I have shown here biomedical wastes. As far as municipal solid waste is handling is concerned, organic fraction of the municipal solid waste handling is concerned, there are many options for us. One is landfilling, other one is combustion process and another one is biological conversion process. Again in that we can convert aerobically or anaerobically into a compost or even by anaerobic digestion we can get the biofuel having a, a sufficient calorific value. So that depends upon the you know, local conditions. On the contrary, I told biomedical waste management is entirely different. So whenever we say, whenever we are discussing municipal solid waste management, we have to make it very sure that that does not deal with the biomedical waste. Government of India has come out with special guidelines for the biomedical waste or hospital waste. So municipal solid waste discussion does not include the biomedical waste. However, for the understanding or getting the knowledge of this subject, you know, in the syllabus biomedical waste management is also discussed. Okay. So waste sterilization is the another advantage what we are getting. Yeah. Uh, despite of advances in the technology, improvement in technology, air pollution still remains a major challenge in the implementation of the incineration. So earlier, <coughs> a few of the incinerations were within the uh, city limits. But however, as the awareness related to air pollution has significantly increased in this century, and now it is not permitted, incineration is not permitted uh, within the uh, residential zone. So it is generally the outskirts of the cities because many flue gases containing 
or containing uh, the toxic elements, toxic elements which we will be discussing later what are the air polluted related issues in the solid waste management. So, there is a challenging task, but however, we have come out with lot of technologies of air pollution control. There is a lot of uh, improvement. I think uh, that should not be a major issue. Actually, this is known as a three component diagram. In fact, the title is missing here. It should be, have been feasibility. Feasibility of municipal solid waste for the combustion process. So, whatever mixture finally a commingled waste or whatever it may be, if we want to subject it to incineration process, the feasibility study is very, very important. So, this is generally studied by studied by what is known as three component diagram. Look carefully into this diagram. It is a triangular diagram. Here is a volatile fraction of the organic matter, volatile fraction of the solid waste or we can say it is a combustible matter. It is increasing 0, 10 percent, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 up to 100. And this line is moisture content percentage and 0 to 100 percent moisture and another line here is non-combustible matter. So, the fraction or commingled solid waste we have to study its feasibility whether it can be directly subjected to incineration process three component diagram and here we have to study here index is given the zone in which refuse can be burnt without auxiliary fuel. So, I would like to have my, yeah, uh, sorry. Yeah. When you study, right? the municipal solid waste for its feasibility, this is the zone. If our waste, what we would like to subject it for municipal incineration process or combustion process, it should fall within this zone. When that waste falls within this zone, we can say that that fraction of the municipal solid waste can be subjected to incineration process without auxiliary fuel, a minimum some fuel is required. So, it does not require otherwise it becomes economical little bit not feasible right. So, here it is Indian cities as comparison Swiss and Japanese yeah. yeah. Indian cities yeah here the study shows that most of the municipal solid waste produced in the Indian cities is not in the zone where we have to say that it is a feasible. So, suggesting that an auxiliary fuel is to be subjected. And Japanese, okay, Japanese is here, this is Japanese here and Swiss is within. So, the waste, municipal solid waste produced in the Swiss cities or Switzerland. So, it is within that and the latest studies also show that the municipal solid waste in Japanese also are very same, they have made significant improvement in the solid waste management and uh, their waste is also well coming well within the this zone which decides the feasibility of the municipal solid waste. I, it is, uh, I think uh, this is the figure of nearly 5 to 10 years uh, back, okay, maybe the latest studies may be showing because India is also very uh, seriously tackling this issue and our honorable Prime Minister Modi ji has come with a slogan Swachya Bharata. So, under this scheme you know lot of attention is given to effective or efficient management of this solid waste. It is because of the management of the solid waste. So, I hope the 
Indian waste also at least 50 percent of the waste also will be coming into the feasible zone. Okay. So, this is what is known as three component diagram. Yeah. The percentage of moisture in a sample of the solid waste is found out. Okay. The analysis. Okay. You know analysis of the properties of the solid waste, physical properties, chemical properties and biological properties may be in the module 1 or 1, it may be in the module. So, there is a procedure, I do not have to repeat here. So, with that procedure find out what is the percentage of the moisture in a sample which is subject, which we will be subjecting it to for the incineration process. Then combustible matter and ash for dry samples is also, you know, okay, in the physical and chemical properties how to find out the combustible matter and ash, we have to analyze that. These values are then plotted in the three component diagram. Once again, I will come back to three component diagram. Yeah, you see, this is non-combustible matter. Yeah, 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, yeah. So, there should not be a non-combustible portion in the solid waste more than 50 percent. If non-combustible portion in the solid waste is more than 50 percent, it is not feasible. So, that is why it is here. And similarly, volatile all combustible percentage or organic fraction of the solid waste, it should be minimum 40 and 100, it should be always more. On the contrary, if it is less than 40 percent, obviously non-combustible matter will be predominating and then incineration process will not be economical and thus it will not be feasible. That is the significance how we have to uh, study this three component diagram. And here this is moisture content, okay. It is always desirable that it should be less than 50. So, this is moisture content, 0 to 50, more moisture, more water in nature, obviously then energy requirement will be more, it will not be feasible. On the contrary, organic matter should be or combustible matter should be minimum 40 percent and more than that and non-combustible fraction should be less than 50 percent. So, this is a very, very important diagram. So, you have to study all the properties and draw as three component diagram for the particular municipal solid waste, solid waste and then decide yes, this is feasible or not. If not feasible, a little bit additional auxiliary fuel can be subjected and what is the quantity of the auxiliary fuel to be subjected also can be calculated. So, this is a very, very important diagram which is known as three component diagram in the incineration of the municipal solid waste management, right. Okay, now we shall go to next. However, still we end up this with the word that this is the first approximation to assess the feasibility of the incineration and needs to be confirmed after detailed calculation. So, what are the detailed calculations and all that? Um, you can go, you can study in the design of the incineration unit, you know. It is of course given in the uh, George Shabana Glossbook, George Shabana Gloss book of Integrated Solid Waste Management, but however, uh, that design uh, I think is not uh, um, mentioned in the syllabus. However, at PG level uh, in environmental engineering, we discussed how to design, you know, the incinerator for the municipal solid waste combustion process and uh, that is also required. So, this is about the feasibility of the municipal solid waste for subjecting it to the combustion process, right. Then we shall see in detail how a typical incinerator is used for the combustion or incineration of the municipal solid waste. So, before coming to these points, I will show you the line diagram of the yeah, 
this is very very standard light diagram line diagram taken from charles savanagla's book and this is a typical very standard in my opinion a line diagram giving very critical and very clear knowledge about the um incineration process of course here we are used here uh, as a mass file i will tell you what is the mass fired combustion municipal combustion and another so I'll, after this i will come to that point carefully look into this diagram please okay i have here is 1 2 3 4 5 6 etc like that up to there are 16 components number 1 is this waste platform right and number 2 is waste storage pit number 3 is a crane which is operated a crane operator operator will be there and he will be picking up the solid waste then this is charging chute and then comes a furnace and here are the grates and this is the burning takes place here and this is known as combustion chamber and this is ammonia injection to control oxides of nitrogen and here is a boiler combustion chamber then steam steam turbine and generator finally a very hot steam or hot steam is converted into electrical energy there is other part and here is a furnace and this is a dry scrub uh, dry scrubber this is a air pollution control equipment particularly to control the particulate matter and here is a bag of filled a uh, dry scrubber sorry for the acids and oxides of the oxygen okay and bag filters are for the control of the particulate matter and this one acid fumes as well uh, oxides of the sulfur and finally here there is a stack for the atmospheric dispersion of the flue gas produced from the incineration process so this slide diagram understand then we shall go back step by step try to remember this parallelly now i will go through step by step process in detail yeah this very very important see basic operations involved in the incineration of commingled municipal solid waste yeah And this is this description is burning or incinerating commingled municipal solid waste that is mixed solid waste which is not subjected to any significant processing may be very large items can be picked out by and large organic inorganic everything plastic paper iron glass everything will be there in the municipal solid waste okay so this you have to very clearly remember that it is a commingled municipal solid waste then the operation begins with the unloading of the solid waste from collection truck so try to remember that figure there you know uh, the truck truck load of the solid waste comes from the previous station okay from the metal processing station and there the vehicle comes the truck comes and that unloads on the platform and finally that is unloaded into the storage pit right and here of course uh, there is a typical you know procedure for the designing of the platform as well as you know um, storage pit or storage bin and just i am giving you what are the criteria uh, to design these platforms so the width of the unloading platform yeah this is very important how much width should be there for the unloading of course obviously it should be very much sufficient for the largest vehicle to uh, Uh, i am load the uh, solid waste into the pit and storage bin 
is a function of size of the facility ultimately what is the size of the facility and number of trucks that must be unloaded simultaneously. So these two factors that decide the width of the unloading factor. So this is all the part of the design but just a minimum you should know that what is the engineering aspect behind that. Where is the depth and storage bin? There it is was the width. Now depth and storage and depth and width of the storage bin are decided by the rate at which waste lands into the or received and the rate of burning. So there is a relation between the rate at, at which the waste is supplied and the rate at which it is burning. Thumb rule, thumb rule is the storage capacity okay, is equal to volume of waste for two days. Okay. It should be able to handle the volume of waste for the two days minimum. That is the a thumb rule to decide the capacity of the storage bin. The overhead crane, I told you there is a overhead crane on which an operator will be there just to pick the commingled municipal salt waste and it will be batch loaded. Okay. So overhead crane is used to batch load, not continuous batch loading. Okay. Weights into a charging chute, a inclined charging chute is there, which finally directs the waste onto the furnace where the burning starts taking place. Uh, here I told you, know, crane operator can select a mix of the wash, it is not wash, it is the waste, sorry. Yeah. The crane operator will be very carefully observing and he can select a mix of waste to achieve fairly even moisture content in the charge. Okay, this uh, you will be given a training how to identify, how to find a mix of that. And you can also even pick some of the large materials and to take them out of the system. So here it is, large non-combustible items can also be removed from the waste with a overhead crane. So that is a kind of arrangement is given. So after having put the waste, okay, the solid waste from the feed chute fall into the grates where they are mass fired fall onto the grate which is grates which is nothing but a, a furnace. And a quite important is the air may be so burning of the solid waste requires air it is a combustion process the difference between combustion and incineration in combustion minimum stypometric gas is or air is oxygen is required where it is little bit excess in the stoichiometer requirement of the oxygen. Introduced from the bottom of the grace because for continuous burning the air is required. So when it is supplied from the bottom of the grates that is known as under fire air by means of a force drop fan. Okay. Or it can be also be some arrangements can be over the grates. So when it is called as a over fire air to control the burning rate. Supply of air is very very necessary, very very important. The quantity of air to be supplied depends upon the properties, chemical properties of the coming out solid waste which is subjected for the burning. So that fair idea one should have and accordingly the it should quantity of air should be supplied and you have to ensure that under any circumstances the air supplied is sufficient enough, it should not be less to control the burning rate. Yeah. As most organic waste are thermally unstable, obvious, most of the organic waste present in the municipal third waste are thermally unstable. So when they are burnt, obviously varieties of gases will be produced because there are many organic fraction which are rich in nitrogen, which are rich in sulfur and which are rich in some other 
chemicals and depending upon that various gases are driven off the combustion process okay which takes place in the furnace the burning takes place in the furnace and these gases and small organic particles that is particulate matter and this is the gas produced out of the burning rise into the combustion chamber number 7 and burn of course at temperature in excess of 1600 Fahrenheit or 800 degree, 870 degrees Celsius approximately. So in general I told in one of the classes around 900 degrees Celsius temperature very very necessary for the effective burning of the commingled municipal solid waste. Is that clear? Next is see now burning of the solid waste has taken place. Now another important objective of the incineration process is energy recovery. You see heat is recovered from the hot gases using water filled tubes in the walls of the combustion chamber so that whatever heat is there it is absorbed and with a boiler. So with this arrangement you know we try to recover the heat. So that finally produces the steam, hot steam, which is finally converted into electricity by turbine generator. All these, uh, you know, uh, in the maroon color, whatever I have highlighted, they are the units or components of the a typical mass fired incinerator for the commingled municipal salt waste. Yeah, and uh, air pollution, okay, is again very very important. I told one of the uh, major disadvantages is that uh, air, lot of air pollutants are produced during this process, and I here I will be discussing in brief about this, and further I will take separately in detail, much more detail. Okay, ammonia injection is there in that figure you can see there is injection of the ammonia okay that is to convert all the nox oxides of uh, nitrogen into harmless nitrogen nitrogen gas so number 10 is given for that so one is nox oxides of the nitrogen we call them as a nox and there is also a scrubber okay which is for eliminating so2 and acid gases number 11 that is a dry scrubber okay it is also known as not no, no, it is a dry scrubber especially to control ox sulfur dioxide and other gases there is one more component which is air pollutant is a particulate matter which is obviously controlled by bag house and fabric filter it is very common uh, very practically feasible as well as most commonly used technique of removal of the particulate matter in the municipal solid waste management is by fabric filters. Maybe we can think of electrostatic precipitator ESP which you might have heard to achieve the same objective but in my opinion that is very costly and not necessary at least for the municipal solid waste incineration. Another equally important is induced draft provision of the induced draft fan. This is necessary to compensate head loss of the air through the air pollution control equipment okay, and also to supply air for the combustion purpose itself. For both these two purposes, you know, induced draft fan is also there which is there in the uh, line diagram which you can see is very much necessary. Yeah, the end production of the combustion or here just to avoid the confusion, I have slash put the slash to highlight that, don't get confused, more or less we can say they are the same. The end product ultimately municipal incinerate is gases and ash and once that uh, 
a flue gas is subjected to and it passes through right scrubber as well as bag filters most of the pollutants are removed but still it should not be dis, uh, dispersed at the minimum level some 15 to 20 meter height it should be uh, dis dispersed into the atmosphere therefore cleaned glasses are discharged to the stack for the atmospheric dispersion so this is one however efficient the air pollution control equipments may be but we cannot uh, play with the health of the public so avoid is all kind of a uh, problems it's always now uh, these days municipal insulators are uh, permitted only outskirts of the city and the stack is sufficiently uh, having sufficient height for the atmospheric dispersion to avoid the air pollution problem in the nearby areas then what are the end products one is gas another is ash and I told it is a commingled waste all the source of matter is present in that whatever material you can imagine so obviously some of the non combustible materials will be there unburnt materials from the grates into the residue hopper right into a residue hopper located below the grates where they are quenched with the water ash and this unburnt materials they are quenched into the water there is the fly ash coming out of dry scrubber and the bag house is mix, mixed with the furnace ash and conveyed to the land site for the final filling ok so air pollutants are eliminated and clean glass is discharged into the atmosphere through stack of very high sufficient height and unburnt flash, unburnt sorry fly ash, unburnt materials they are all mixed and taken to the landfill for the filling. We will go to next slide. Yeah, this is again try to now understand what I have discussed. Here is the weighing machine that means how much the solid waste is put into the waste storage put so to measure that the weighing platform is there this platform and unloading and this is a crane which picks the mixture of solid waste which is feasible for the burning and put into the charge chute and here is a furnace and these are the grates and air is supplied from the bottom so burning takes place hot flue gases are produced here and converted into generator through the stream burners thus energy is required as far as air pollution are concerned dry cover is there which removes the acid gases as well as sulfur dioxide and uh, ammonia injection in the combustion chamber itself reduces or converts all the nox, uh, nox oxides of nitrogen into harmless nitrogen compound and after this scrubber it is subject to the back house to remove the particulate matter and I was talking about the induced draft is there and this uh, stack is for atmospheric dispersion ok next slide so here I have given you a, a typical uh, you know uh, animation diagram which I have taken from the YouTube so again I would be uh, uh, I would like to acknowledge the YouTube for using the resources animation or other videos for the academic purpose so you carefully go through this video and uh, try to remember what I discussed now you can very easily understand the concept everything is same to same and that makes you that animation I hope will give you paka understand, understanding of the incineration process. Incineration of waste can provide municipalities and industrials with electricity, heating and process steam. Here's how and why at a glance.
Collected by dump trucks, the waste is delivered to the incineration plant where it is weighed and then passed to the unloading dock. It is then tipped into a pit that is sufficiently big to provide continuous infeed for the plant. Remotely operated, the grabs have a dual function. They mix the waste to make it homogeneous and they feed the combustion furnaces. In the control room, the technicians control the facility's operation and the quality of the atmospheric discharge. The waste is tipped into hoppers to supply the furnaces and then burnt at a very high temperature. The plant is maintained under negative pressure to prevent any odors or off gas from escaping. The clinker, the solid residue from incineration, is removed by a conveyor belt and stored. It will be recycled as earth moving material for sub base roads. The acids in the off gas are neutralized in a reactor by injecting lime and sodium bicarbonate, to which is added activated carbon to absorb the dioxins and heavy metals. Bag filters retain the dust, salts and other solids which will be sent to a hazardous waste landfill. The incineration of waste generates energy which will now be recovered. The heat is captured by the water tubes installed in the boiler walls. The heated water is converted into high pressure steam in a tank. This steam, superheated in high temperature exchangers, is sent to a cogeneration plant. Cogeneration both produces electricity and recovers residual heat. This steam drives a turbine which coupled to an alternator generates electricity. The electricity is fed into the public grid. The residual heat, generally lost, is recovered here in a heat exchanger to supply the local residents with heating or hot water. By transforming non-recyclable waste into a source of renewable energy, our circular economy solutions reduce the volume of cities' waste and their carbon emissions. One is three component diagram. Another equally important point to be re uh, remembered while controlling the incineration process is three T's during the combustion. So during the design of the incinerator, the three T's play an important role. What are these three T's? One is time, temperature and turbulence. So once you are subjecting a mixture of a commingled salt waste for the burning, obviously the efficiency of the burning or efficiency of the combustion obviously will depend upon time, temperature and turbulence. The volume of the combustion chamber has to be so designed that the waste is retained inside for a sufficient time to ensure the complete burning. Okay. So how much time is required and all these things will be considered in detail in the design of the incinerator. But here sufficient time, obviously anything, um, it is to be burnt effectively and sufficient time should be given. If the time is very less, obviously many of the uh, organic matter, organic fraction of the waste, weight, uh, waste goes unburnt leading to a further problem. So first thing, first T important thing is that sufficient time should be re, uh, given for the municipal solid waste so that it is retained within the combustion chamber for the sufficient time. Falling right from, falling from the charging chute into the furnace and then going out sufficient time should be there. So that is the first T. Second T is temperature. Yeah, I already have told you the temperature has to be maintained at a such a value it ensures the complete combustion, ensure complete com In case of calorific value of the waste is low, auxiliary fuel has to be added. Already I have told you three component diagram to study the feasibility of the municipal solid waste which is, will be subjected to the combustion process to attain a desired temperature for. So by and large, by experience, it is found that approximately around 900 degrees Celsius. 
not less than 870 degrees Celsius, temperature should be maintained in the incinerator so that you know ultimately the burning takes place efficiently. And the last one is the turbulence, three T's. The charge and the air, charge is solid waste and air supply has to be thoroughly mixed for ensure complete, ensuring complete combustion. Obviously, air is coming from the bottom and the charge means the solid waste. A batch charge of solid waste is coming and the arrangement should be such that there is a proper mixing. Proper mixing, sufficient time and minimum of 900 degree Celsius temperature if it is there, okay, we can expect an efficient working of the incinerator. So, this normally is achieved by creating necessary turbulence. So, if you want burning to be efficient, although temperature is there sufficient, although sufficient time you are giving, but if the mixing is improper still, then you cannot ensure complete completion of the combustible material present in the municipal solid waste. Okay. Yeah. So, this was all about uh, you know uh, the incineration process. So, I was talking okay, there are two types of the municipal solid waste combust uh, incinerators. One is mass fired okay and another one is the segregated waste that is which is known as RDF refuse derived fuel. So, this is very pure and this is mass fired whatever we have discussed is the mass fired. That is, it is a mass fire is mixture of everything, whereas uh, refuse derived fuel incinerator, okay, that is only organic fraction or combustible fraction of the municipal solid waste is subject. You may ask, sir, if that is the case, means this is much more uh, you know uh, efficient. Obviously, energy recovered and all those things are efficient because only organic fracture will be there. But when you consider overall process of handling, handling entire coming out solid waste and all that, uh, the final you know outcome of this uh, relative study and all that, particularly for municipal solid waste management, the mass fired incineration process is generally preferred these days. In almost all the countries, not only in India, you know, um, in every country it is preferred still. Okay, yeah. So already we have uh, discussed little bit. What are the major pollutants? Number one, you know, hot combustible gases called flue gas. Here we call it as a flue gas. It consists of mixture of water vapor, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide, oxides of nitrogen, hydrogen, particulate matter, acid gases, VOC is volatile organic carbon, dioxins as well as ferines. Because remember it is a coming out municipal solid waste. So, this is not the case with the refuse derived fuel incinerator. Then obviously, non-combustible residue that is ash, these two are the <coughs> major pollutants which we have to handle in a municipal incinerator. Again in here during the study, you know, there are two types of ashes, one coming uh, from the bottom that is known as a primary residue and other fly ash coming from the flue gases. You can look into that figure there also some fly ash collected. Okay. Bottom ash disposed in special landfills, 
which are double lined to prevent ground water pollution. So, I have already told about the lined landfill site of the late you know in India also we are making a lined municipal solid waste handling landfill sites that is non permeable geo permeable membranes are uh, geo membranes are used which are not permeable in nature and thus uh, they will not allow the leachate to enter into the ground and uh, avoid the ground water pollution. And uh, control of particulates is the next item and we shall discuss this in the next class. Okay? Thank you.